Okay, so in the last video we introduced the natural logarithm. We went over some of the properties. We showed how these properties followed from properties of exponents, right, from the exponential function and its properties. Um, and, and I mentioned that, you know, as long as you have these properties and, and as long as you kind of know what the graph looks like, you, you know pretty much everything you need to know to work with logarithms, right? Um, Again, uh, it's easy to make mistakes with these properties. Um, there's always some wishful thinking that there should be a rule when you have addition inside the logarithm. Unfortunately, there isn't. Um, so some people will get these mixed up. It's okay, it happens. You get the hang of things with practice. Uh, but the one thing that does come up is, okay, what if, you have, what if you have some other base, right? I did everything for the natural log. So what if you're working um, with, say, base a, right? So let's say, what about, let's say we're doing f of x equals log base a of x, okay? We want to understand how to work with this. So it turns out, once you understand the natural log, you pretty much know everything because every other logarithm can be written in terms of the natural log. Um, to see how this works, let's let y equal to base a log of x. Okay? Um, now, remember what this means. Saying that y equals the base a log of x is the same thing as saying a to the y is equal to x, right? Okay. Um, now, here's a here's a trick that you can do. Remember that remember that the natural log is the inverse of the exponential function, right? And That means that um, oh maybe not f since e to the x and ln of x are inverses that means that if I did e to the log of x they cancel each other out they give me back x so in particular I could do a to the y would be the same thing as e to the natural log of a to the y. Okay? And that in turn was equal to x. Okay. Now, remember that we have this property down here, right? We can bring the k out front. Okay, so I can bring that y out front. So I can say that e to the y times the natural log of a is equal to x. Okay, now let's take the log of both sides and see what happens. The natural log of e to the y ln a is equal to the natural log of x, right? Natural logs are functions, so equal inputs have to produce equal outputs. Very good. Um, but since these are inverses, it's also true that if I do the natural log of e to some power, again, those cancel out and just give me back the power. So that means that what I get is that y times the natural log of a is equal to the natural log of x. And remember what y is. y was our original base a log. Um, so I can solve for y here, and what do I get? I get that y, which is 
the base a log of x, right? And from there, I can see that y is the same thing as the natural log of x divided by the natural log of a. So I get this. Okay. This is the so-called change of base formula. Okay. And what it tells you is that a logarithm in any other base can be written in terms of a natural log. So if you understand the natural log, you understand every other logarithm. And again, uh, from the point of view of calculus, we're going to see that once we get into derivatives, integrals, things like that, even limits, uh, the natural log is, is easier to deal with um, than logs to other bases. And so we try to do everything in terms of the natural log. Okay. 